Hey guys, how you doing? Ray here again. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, it's Nitro Kyosho. Uh, today we're going to be talking about preparation for 3D flying. Uh, so let's get started. All right, today is mostly going to be about the mechanical end of it with a few tips and tricks. And uh, if there's a part two coming, it will be about the computer end of it. Okay, a line is calling for this to have anywhere from 25 degrees of pitch, which basically roughly 12 degrees positive they're saying it's capable of and 12 degrees negative. Okay, uh, I run mine at about 9, 10 degrees pitch, positive and negative. You get yourself a pitch uh, gauge and you can adjust that. All right, <clears throat> so I'm assuming you know what you're doing by now. You're flying good and you're ready to tackle 3D, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that your helicopter mechanically is set up properly. Whether you built it, whether you bought it already put together, uh, whatever have you. Um, this, this video is mainly going to be for new into this hobby to intermediate. It's not going to be a video that's going to benefit somebody advanced that's been into this for a while. Okay, the first thing that I think I would like to do, or I would do, if I was going to check this out, is I would disconnect your three wires to the motor. Okay, turn on your transmitter, plug your battery in. All right, and then you're going to take your transmitter, you're going to put it at mid 50% throttle. Okay, then you're going to hit your idle up switch or stunt stunt mode switch, whichever you like to call it. All right. Now you're going to put, you're going to use your gauge here. All right, and you're going to go full stick. You're going to check the pitch. All right. You want? I, I run 910. It, it's personal preference what you want to run. But the here's the tricky part. The problem that some people might run into if the helicopter wasn't set up properly at the factory or wasn't set up initially properly. Uh, one of my customers had one of these and I checked it out for him and uh, he had about 9, 10 degrees pitch positive but then when we checked his negative pitch he had zero, nothing, which basically means if the helicopter, if he ever flipped the helicopter upside down like this, it would have just gradually started coming to the ground because it wouldn't have had no lift and he probably would have been sitting there scratching his head wondering why he's giving it you know full negative throttle and it's just continually coming to the ground um, now if in a situation like that if you were up high enough you might be able to do a barrel roll and, and flip it back over and save it but anyways that's what was happening and basically uh, when it was put together uh, the pitch rods were off quite a bit and uh, some of the uh, linkage down in the swash had to be lowered and the whole swash plate had to be brought down. So if the helicopter was flipped over, the pilot would have been in for a big surprise and probably baffling, would have been baffling, okay, why it happened. So, just as a tip, when you're setting these up, all right, and you're going to set it up. If you have any intentions on putting it in stunt mode and starting to do acrobatic flight, you must make sure that it's set up properly and that it has the same pitch positive and the same pitch negative when the blades go down, okay? Uh, and if you don't, you'll be in for a shocker. Now, how you adjust that usually is going to stem from your linkages here. Your, you've got your uh, two pitch rods. And then you have your general uh, ones that are on the swash. Uh, usually you can tell by looking at a helicopter if the swash is sitting up real high. Uh, this one is sitting from, probably from the frame about a half an inch from the block, I would say. Uh, and that basically, you know, using your pitch gauge here is basically how you make sure it's set up properly, you know. Uh, the computer end of it is a whole other ball game. I don't want to make a long, long video uh, 
because that sometimes deters viewers uh, from watching. So I'll make a part two with the computer end of it. Uh, but usually, I mean, for the most part, if you're not getting that negative pitch, guys, it's usually because of the pitch rods are too long and they need to be shortened. And when those are shortened, sometimes you'll make some adjustments on the swash lowering that too. Because uh, it needs to be able to go both ways equally. All right. If you don't have negative pitch on the blades and this goes upside down, all right, it's going to go down. Um, somebody, one of my uh, subscribers, okay, was asking me about uh, 3D flight. I call it acrobatic flight. I think 3D is just a word that was made up to, it doesn't really mean anything. It, it's uh, three dimensional, it means it has nothing to do with acrobatic flight. Acrobatic flight is what I call it. In my opinion, the single most important move to start learning, all right, and probably some viewers will laugh, all right, is the pirouette, all right, pirouetting. Now you have, usually when they talk about acrobatics, they'll say your basic beginning acrobatics is your barrel roll, uh, your loop, your stall turn, your pirouette, and uh, sometimes they'll say auto rotations, but some some do some don't. But those are your four basic. Now people look at those and laugh. They say, "Oh, a loop! I can do a loop." Well, that's that's simple. It's like you know, hovering, whatever. You know, stall turn. They they overlook those are very important. Okay, those are the foundation, okay, that is going to be laid for later on. All right, a loop, going into a loop, okay, well, now guess what? Inverted flight comes off of the loop because now you get into that loop and you decide to stop. All right, uh, I do a stall turn that is very, very difficult, and I've been told by people that they wouldn't even attempt to do it. And what I do is I go up into a stall turn, and I just don't do a basic stall turn. I'll bring that thing up, and I'll sw hit that rudder left to right, and I'll swing this thing around doing a windmill, all right? And it'll be spinning so fast you can't even see it. And most people are scared to do those because when they, they stop, they're afraid they're not going to get their orientation. All right, I, it's a stall turn. I've turned it into what's called a stall turn windmill. Uh, so you got your loop, which can turn into inverted flight. Eventually, you've got uh, your stall turn, which can turn be a pretty aggressive, wild thing if you do what I do with it. Uh, the pirouette is going to give you the most control over your helicopter that you're going to need to become a great pilot. Pirouetting is probably the most overlooked thing. All right, uh, and probably it, it, the most difficult, really, to get right, like a barrel roll. Okay, some people think a barrel roll is so easy, but you see them do it. They go into a barrel roll and they go to turn it, and the helicopter swoops down and comes back up like this. That's incorrect, guys. When you do a barrel roll, that helicopter shouldn't move an inch. It should go like this and do a complete turn like that without moving. When you see people doing barrel rolls and you get that big swooping motion, they're not doing it right. A lot of doing acrobatic flight is doing it properly and getting getting things down the right way. The pirouette is going to give you the utmost confidence and the utmost control because it's going to be turning and it's going to be at every point. Now. Some people say, I can't do a nose and hover. Well, if you freak out when this thing turns around and fr faces you, you might as well forget about acrobatic flight because you're not ready for it, all right? To do acrobatic flight, you have to have 100% control of this helicopter. Okay, I stressed on, on hovering for learning to fly. 
that is, is for learning. Now, for learning acrobatic, okay, the night, most important, utmost important thing is that pirouette. Because you need to be able to float this thing around up there, turn it at will, and have confidence to be able to straighten it out when you got it this way and it starts going like this, when you got it this way and it's going like that. When it's going every which way, you have to have 100% control of this helicopter. And if you don't, forget about acrobatic flight, okay? My, my opinion of acrobatic flight is that learning the pirouette and being able to pirouette all over the place and pirouetting travel is going to lead you to be a great acrobatic pilot. Um, I'm 100% confident in saying that, all right? So, that's my tips. Uh, that's the general information about making sure your helicopter uh, is set up properly. And once again, you want to disconnect your motor, all three wires. You want to turn on your transmitter. You want to plug in your battery. You want to put your stick at 50% throttle, and you want to hit your idle up. Now, when you hit that idle up at 50% throttle, this is one thing I missed. That's why I'm coming back on this. That swash plate should not move at all. When that's at 50% throttle, and you flip that idle up, you don't want that swash plate to move at all. And then basically, uh, you're just going to move your swash to full uh, 100%. Uh, on your transmitter, you're going to check and see what your pitch is, and then you're going to drop it down to 100% negative, and you're going to want the same pitch at negative. All right. So, anyways, this is going to be part one of this uh, video I, uh, collection I'm going to make. Uh, the next part will be the computer end of it and setting up. The computer end of it is a lot of preference, so it's going to be basic. Uh, touching upon different things and how you want different things set up but most of the time people want to do what they want to do and they want to have their own preferences so uh, anyways I hope that you got something out of this video I hope that this uh, little bit of information helped you and uh, helps you to not make a big mistake and uh, we'll talk to you soon thanks for watching